That's a poo. That's a poo. So grateful to be here with you. Trust that you are well. It is our time. I'm so glad that we could all be here together. So glad to be here. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Hopefully you've been engaging actively in your practices such that as we move in this energy, in this space at this time, we will be actively moving together as we grow in the practice, right? Right. So we are here on the other side of another amazing, amazing journey in this year, 2020. I'm grateful that we are able to be here together, that we are working on the practice of longevity, of health and healing, and of expanding our awareness, our understanding of ourselves, and our ability to cultivate uh, discipline, cultivate our will, and to actually, through the fire of that cultivation of that will, to get to know ourselves more fully. That being said, today is a good bit of fun. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna get into that Asar stance after we bow in. We're gonna get into our Qigong. I've been looking forward to getting into it this week. And I'm gonna review one of the Qigong sessions after we go through the form, after we go through the exercises. I'll point out one particular aspect of our Qigong that we'll go over because I want to consistently build so you have an opportunity to get this in as you're practicing at home. You want to be able to practice at home. So that way, in between sessions, after sessions, you not only get the rhythm of what it looks like and how it feels, but what you're also able to do is to utilize the YouTube sessions, the YouTube videos that are up to be able to aid and facilitate your continued growth and development. So that's what they're for. That's why we're doing these live and recording so that in between, in between time, you have an opportunity to have our support, my support. In addition, you can also hit me up on the various social media and just see if you want some clarification or further knowledge or information around one of the particular movements, one of the readings from the wisdom from the sages of the ages or something like that. So we wanna be able to make sure that you have access to all the information that is possible, particularly as we are in you know, month, this is six, seven of the voluntary shelter in place. And I think towards the end, I'll also, you know, begin to remind folks about how we can, you know, maintain our, our mental health, our emotional health, our psychological health, utilizing these practices as we go forward, as you, we're about to be indoors a lot more as the weather shifts here in the Northern Hemisphere, and we head into a uh, really deep fall and head and move towards winter. And we'll talk about what the Kemetic Aha and Sama Association will be doing during this time to aid and facilitate your ability to manage your health holistically during this time. So enough with the chit chat and the chattering and chittering. My goal is to get us in, get us started. So what we're gonna do is get ourselves into the Wu Chi position. I'll give you a second to get that worked out. We are in process and so we should be able to have a more fully illuminated uh, practice 
and session so that as I step back, I won't be in silhouette. I will actually be a bit more well lit so you can see my beautiful mahogany skin. You'll be able to hear my dulcet tones a little more clearly. And we'll be able to then focus and emphasize on incorporating the whole body in the movements. So you should also be able to see the feet at that time as well. So we'll be getting into being able to see me from head to toe as we go forward. And that will be perfect because that will also coincide with us being able to review the entire form that we've got up till then. And it will more than likely come right as we head into the full moon, blue moon for October. And as we do that, we will then be prepared to head on into November with some other changes. And we'll talk about those changes and the environment at the end for those that are able to stick around. If you're not able to stick around, uh, join us on YouTube and I'll share that information with you directly on where you would want to go and get some additional information. All right, let's hit it. Wu Chi position. All right. Heels together from a 90 degree angle, knees slightly bent, waist tucked. Arms relax at the sides. Bellows breathing. Shoulders relaxed, head level. Bring the hands into pyramid hands. And we perform the Shia Sha, bowing in. We say to all the African, Indian, Asian, Chinese, Native American, and Pacific Islander masters that have gone before us, we bow. And then teacher to student, student to teacher. Pyramid hands. Gonna shift all that weight to the right leg. We're gonna pick up the left toes. Gonna to step to the left, heel first. Shifting the weight, balancing the weight of the body. Sitting down on those legs, making sure the bottom is tucked. Continuing the bellows breathing. Opening the hands into the Asar stance position. Let us begin. We're going to work for 20 breaths.
a little deeper for four more breaths. Hermit hands. Shift the weight to the right, slide the left foot into Uchi position. Bring the hands down, shake it out, opposite hand, opposite leg. All right. Shake it out again. Back in the Uchi position. Pyramid hands. You're gonna shift the weight to the right, stepping left, a little wider than shoulders width. Palms up, toes, knees, and hands pointing the same direction, holding the golden balls, two breaths. Rotating the hands into oneness, two breaths. Into oneness, chin down, into the turtle. Exhale to the drawbridge. Point the hands between the legs. Into oneness. Two breaths. Into rabbit through the shoot. Into oneness.
into elbows. Pick up the pace. Right hand on top of left hand, palms up, thumbs touching. Rotate the left hand on top. Palms are facing each other. I want to see a ball of gold and white light like the sun in between the palms of the hands. into oneness. Into the turtle. Out to the drawbridge. Point the hands. Into oneness. Give it hands. Shifting all the way to the right as you slide the left foot in the Uchi. And then we shake it out opposite hand, opposite hand. All right, feet parallel, shoulders width. Double check, make sure that your shoulder's width, not with the inside of the shoulder where the clavicle meets, but on the outside of the shoulder so you have a good stable base where the knees are able to just come straight up and down when they're not going in or out. All right? And we have our SAR stance demonstration video where we show you how to measure. The hands come here, the feet are the appropriate width, the hand should be right on top of the femur or the thigh bone. You just bend over and let the hands come straight down. They come down the legs. They 
come all the way down to the bone that extends from the ankle into the big toe. Excellent. So from here, I'm going to get into pyramid hands. Two breaths here. And bring the hands here. 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Two breaths, palms facing the head. Palms facing forward, two breaths. Let the arms come down, interlace the fingers, palms outward right in front of the heart. We're going to raise the hands to the heavens. As we raise the hands up, we breathe in, we come up on the balls of the feet. And we exhale, and we come down. We do this eight times. Here we go. Last one. Bring the hands down and go on the swinging arms. Let them swing. And sinking down as we open the chest. All right, come right into the gathering.
right, shake it out, lap some hand, lap some leg. Three parallel shoulders width. All right, make sure the bottom is tucked. Right hand on top of left hand. Got to shift the weight to the right and turn as we wave hands like clouds. Right back to center, hands down, sun rises over the mountain and sunsets. Keep going. Okay, we're gonna ward off to the right and left four breaths.
One more sun rises. Shake it out, lobs it in, lobs it late. Feet parallel, shoulders width. Four breaths to grasp the bird's tail, sink down. Stepping back, shake it out. Yes. Four breaths to roll back, sinking down. Four breaths all the way to roll back. Here we go. Shake it out. Feet parallel, shoulders width. And then 
to flow all the way through the row back. Sinking down, sun rises. Again, sinking, Again. 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 All right, check it out. Feet parallel, shoulders width. We're going to review opening the chest, taking it very slowly. So the ideal movement for opening the chest is you're going to breathe in, still breathing in. The arms come up, still breathing in. Shoulder height, still breathing in. Turn the palms so they face each other, still breathing in. 
Separate the hands so the shoulder blades touch. Still breathing in. If you can, arch the head back. If you can, arch back. Exhale. Coming out. Palms down, still exhaling. And down. Okay, the legs just rise up and down like sunrise and sunsets. Okay, I'm gonna do it from the side. You see, so it's here. Opening the chest, hands come up. Rotate the palms, hands separate. Shoulder blades touch, see, shoulder blades touch. Head back then, you arch. You come forward, hands are here. Rotate the palms and down. Remember the arms first, then, then the neck. Okay, I'm getting back a little bit. We're gonna trace, we're gonna breathe as long as the arms today. You wanna get yourself ready. You're gonna take your right index finger and block off the right nostril. You're gonna take the left hand and put it out here in space. You wanna be able to see the left index finger with your peripheral vision. Breathing in, you're gonna follow it in with the eyes all the way into your cross-eyed. Then you're gonna exhale, follow it with the eyes all the way out until it's in your peripheral. Now again, my peripheral is here. As I can see, don't turn the head, the head stays straight forward. Okay, so if your peripheral is right here, or if your peripheral is here or here, work with where your periphery is. Got it? Bring the hands down. Just want to show you. Okay, you're going to work where your peripheral vision is. So if it's right here or right here, there's nothing wrong with that. We're all at different levels. It don't compare me with me. I've been doing this almost 30 years. So I've been working on improve my peripheral vision, maintain my peripheral vision and my breathing. So if you're newer to this, don't fret, don't stress. This is beginner accessible. This is accessible to anybody with a body, anybody with a digit that can block off the nostril, okay? So here we go, sitting tall, using the right index finger, right index finger on the right nostril, extend the left hand. I'm in the mirror with y'all, that's all it is, I'm in the mirror. All right, you're gonna breathe in. Out. Keeping the shoulders relaxed, in. Out. In. Out. And out. And out. And Out. And. Out. And. Out. Breathing in and out 10 times fast fire breath. Deep breath in. Out. Fire breath. Deep breath in. Bring it in, follow the finger in. 
Oh. And. Out. And. Out. And. Out. And. And out. And out. Both hands palm down on top of the knees, breathing in. Out. In, out. To feel both nostrils pushing and pulling along with the belly in, out. In, out. Fire breath. Deep breath in, chin down. And release. <sighs> yes, and you should notice that both nostrils are breathing together in concert. This is a variation on the alternate nostril breathing exercises. This one is called breathing as long as the arms. Very, very good for working and strengthening the eye muscles. Okay, so, so you're actually following it with your eyes, very coordinated, very good for the eyes, keep the eye muscles strong, particularly as we're aging. It's a way to maintain some of your visual acuity. Not saying that it's not going to change as you hit 40 and then as you hit 50 and those sorts of things. Just saying that some of the sharpness you can maintain and some of the color saturation, other things you can maintain along with the breathing that we have here it enables you to uh, achieve uh, a lifted state, an elevated state through breathing, through meditation, in the event that you may not uh, have access to substances that do the same. So what's one of the things that I offer folks is, well, <laughs> we'll come back to that. Okay, so we're gonna do, uh, <laughs> I think I may do that on Sundays with Seba about, uh, uh, yeah, let's all get lifted. Bringing back one of my favorite uh, 90s, 90s anthems from the good life. And I know some of you may be your first time understanding or hear, hearing me and see this white hair on my face and not understand that I am hip hop and I'm a child of hip hop. I grew up with hip hop and was part of a very special place, both for writing and for performance and delivery of innovation and creativity. And so it never leaves me, it never leaves us. These practices, these tools that I share uh, enable whatever gift that you have wherever you may use it or need it. So with that being said, we're gonna be reading from the essence of Tai Chi Chuan, the literary tradition from our wisdom from the sages of the ages. All right, here we go, clear the mind. And for those of you that, uh, this may be your first time with us doing this, in our live in-person classes, we actually have a series of books and this is a part of our commitment to literacy within the communities that I serve so that everybody gets a book and everybody reads from the wisdom traditions, either from your own tradition, but ideally from a tradition different than your own. Because what we wanna be able to help folks do, not just to decolonize and get away from the imperialist frame of reference and thinking, but to help folks understand very clearly that wisdom doesn't have one culture that all cultures have wisdom, all cultures have sages, and that it's important that we learn and share with one another because 
Just because you have a candle and somebody else has a candle doesn't mean that we're competing for the light. What it means is that if there is someone without light that we can either combine and share or we can share and there's only more light. There never is less darkness, there's just more light. And I need y'all to begin to understand that as a concept that yes, there's distance between the stars but that's so we can see their brilliance and so we can understand their uniqueness. The only reason they appear far is because we perceive them as different than us. The same way a liver cell may look at a stomach cell and be like, wow, they sure are different, but they're performing a specific function and service to the one body. Here we go. And this reading is coming from the section called, I think it's the Tai Chi Chuan Lun, yep. So Tai Chi Chuan Lun, this is the concluding paragraphs and it says, finally, you can say that you understand internal strength. After you understand internal strength, the more practice, the more skill. Silently treasure up knowledge and turn it over in the mind. Gradually, you can do as you like. Originally, it is giving up yourself to follow others. Most people mistakenly give up the near to seek the far. It is said missing it by a little will lead many miles astray. So the practitioner must carefully steady. And so I raise that because we're at a point in, in the stay at home cycle where many folks are like, yeah, they still on grass or bird's tail. They haven't moved beyond roll back. What's wrong is that again, the way I teach, I want you to get it. I don't just want you to have this series of movements that you can, it's not just an elaborate dance. This is for health and longevity in addition to self-defense. So I want you to be able to have a strong core. Only way you get that is from a SAR stance from doing these exercises in the movements. So if you're not doing those things at home in between these sessions, it's just like you're starting over every time. And so what, what that means is everybody else, if you've ever seen a gas burning stove or oven, what you gotta do if you don't practice and consistently practice, you gotta light the pilot every time. You gotta light the pilot before you can get started. Everybody else is poof, poof, and it's on, we cooking with gas, quick, fast. However, if you gotta light the pilot each time, first you gotta find something to light the pilot with, gotta make sure you have what you need to light the pilot. So it's a process to get the pilot lit. Once the pilot's lit, it doesn't take much to keep it lit. It just needs to be fed. And that feeding of the fire is your bellows breathing. And that's why we do it in the multiple places that we do it in for this part of the form. So I want you to see that nothing you have learned has been wasted. Nothing that you have learned has been a delay. The goal is to build you up so that your legs are strong, so that your shoulders are strong, so that your core is strengthening in a way that when I add the, when we add the actual core exercises to this, you're not going to fall over and die and be like, I'm done with it, Pooh, I'm not doing this. <laughs> he tried to kill me with them core exercises last week. I'm not, I'm not, not having it. So I just want you to get that. All right. So right now we're going to bow out. And so we say, to all the masters that have gone before us, we bow. Teacher to student, student teacher, bearing witness to the ancestors and the eternal witnesses of the earth and the sky. We say, Ashe. I wanna say, Hatep, peace to you. Uncle Jasanab, life, health, and strength to all who are with us that hear my voice. Grateful for your time. Thank you for being with us. Practice, practice, practice. We are in a very, challenging time. All of us have an opportunity to make a consistent commitment to a lifestyle change. If your body is in this place and it's healing, help it stay healing and stay in a good place. Good time.